Leonardo AI is an image generative model that runs specifically on fine-tuned models. Now we're going to talk about all of this and how you can get whitelisted. There's going to be two links down in the description below. The first one is going to take you to Leonardo.ai. This of course is where you can sign up completely free and request access to the whitelist. However, link number two is going to be to their Discord where you can actually apply for priority early access access, this will give you whitelist in two to three days versus having to wait for this email. So let's talk about Leonardo AI top down and show you how to use all of its functions and features including training your own data set. When we first load into app.leonardo.ai, we're greeted with this home screen. Now, a lot of this is just a culmination of what we can find on this left side menu, but let's run through there too real quick. We have featured models and recent creations. Recent creations is just gonna be all of the generations that are basically coming through live on Leonardo. Now, something cool, any of these, like let's say this first one, if we click on it, we not only get the full prompt but we get a few other options on the bottom most importantly we have the exact model that this individual used to generate this image by clicking on this arrow we can then generate our own images using this exact same model now on top of this we have the exact prompt they used the option to copy the prompt. We also have image to image. This will run much like Stable Diffusion's image to image where you can take this image and make generative copies or remixes rather. While we can't exactly copy what someone else does, we can use it as a reference point inside of the same model to remix it. All right. Great. Now let's talk about the top part, which is featured models. These right here are all of the different generative models. You'll see things here like Leonardo's Dream Shaper, which by name is a versatile model great at both photorealism and anime. It includes noise offset training or a denoiser effect. Now on the other end, we have like a vintage style photography, Luna, RPG models, and a ton more. We're gonna go into that when we get to the fine tune models of this section after we train our own. It's all very, very simple. You'll also notice on the bottom who created these. While a lot of these are done by Leonardo itself, you can see that we have user generated models like the one from Jaquin and Vo Images right here. The first section on the left side of the screen is very self-explanatory. We have the community feed. That is the same exact thing as recent creations. So we really don't need our own tab for that and we don't need to explain it. Now the personal feed is where we're going to see all of our own generatives. We can also go up to the top and see the feed of people or individuals that we follow. We can also see images that we like. To show this, we can go back to home and just click the heart button on one of these images. We can then go into our personal feed and it'll be in our liked feed. So at any point in time, if we like the model, like the style, or like the prompt, we can have that right here and it won't be buried under the community feed. From here, let's go ahead and go down to training and data sets. This is where you're gonna be able to train your own generative model. You'll be brought to this screen right here with create new data set in the middle. We also on the top have edit data set and job status. These will become more useful once we actually create our first data set. You can think of this as a model. If you wanna fine tune a model for a specific use case, this is where you'll go. In our case, we wanna fine tune a landscape model. So let's go ahead and name this landscape model. This data set is tuned for creating overhead landscapes. And we'll click create data set. Now this is where you can drag and drop files to train it. And I suggest doing a minimum of eight images to train it. Let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll go ahead and click here, which will open this right here. We can then go to downloads and you'll see that I've taken a bunch of mid-journey images right here, and this is from the mid-journey server right here. You can see my prompt, very, very simple, and we will click on open. This will open all of these images. It will load them into our own model that is trained to interpret these landscapes into our new prompts. Let's go ahead and give this a second to load, 
There we go. And now on the bottom right, we can click on train model. It'll then train the model based on these options. We of course have the model name, which is landscape. We have the model description, which is landscape generator. We have the training resolution. You can change this to either 512 or 768. And then we of course have the stable diffusion model. Now for this, let's go ahead and use the 2.1, which means we have to set the resolution matching that as well. The instance prompt here is going to be overhead view of landscape. We don't really need a period there. And the category is going to be environments. You'll notice that you have a lot of different options here, but for this, we're going to use environment. This is not going to be NSFW, so we can go ahead and start training. Now this is in progress. We're going to go ahead and go to the next section while we wait. Real quick, it should be noted that at any point in time, you can check on the training of your model in the job status section. Again, you have your data sets, edit data set, and job status. And on the right, we can see the status as processing. Let's go ahead and go to the next tab down, which will be the fine-tuned models. This is a mixture of Leonardo created and user generated models. This is basically what we're doing inside of data sets. These fine-tuned models are models that others have created using the training a model feature. We can see things like spirit creatures, shields, one that I'm very interested in playing around with, which is the isometric fantasy. If you've seen my recent depth map 3D generative video, you'll know that I'm messing around with image to 3D quite a bit. So here we can see all of the most popular models or promoted models here. We also have four tabs on the top. This platform, then we have community models, which is going to be where our data set is going to go once finished. We have your models, and we have favorite models. Much like the community feed, we can go to a model and bookmark it, and it will then show up in favorite models. If we click on one of these, it'll open and show you things like the resolution, the base model, strength, category, and description. In this case, it is meant for characters at a 512 by 512 stable diffusion version 1.5 model. If we want to use this model, we can do it directly from this screen by clicking on generate with this model and it'll bring us to a text prompt window. Speaking of text prompts, let's go down to user tools and click on AI image generation. Well, this looks familiar. We're greeted with a screen that has a bunch of options on the left side and a prompting window with a generate button right on top. First, let's talk about this over here. When you're just getting started, you'll notice you have 150 free credits. It uses approximately seven credits to generate four images. And if we're generating one, it only takes two credits. So if you're only generating one image, you have 75 free images with your whitelist. Let's go ahead and just leave that at one for now for testing. We also have prompt magic and a cool little question mark to let us know that this is a custom rendering pipeline that has far greater prompt adherence and can improve the output with any chosen model. Well, what exactly does this mean? Well, that means at twice the token cost, so instead of two, we're gonna be paying four, this is gonna be trained on basically a control net. If you've used Stable Diffusion, you know that you can choose whether you would like your prompt to be followed more closely, or you would rather have your generative tool have a little bit more artistic freedom. This is specifically that. This will make sure that your AI generation tool follows the prompt over anything. If you're welcome to Midjourney, or if you're welcome, if you're knowledgeable of Midjourney, you'll know about the chaos prompt. You can kind of think of it as that as well if you've never used Stable Diffusion. Enough on that, let's go down to image dimensions. Now, of course, there is a little question mark here, but I don't think that image dimension is something that really needs to be covered. Let's go ahead and just leave this at 1024. We also have these little sliders here if we would like to increase it or decrease it further. We also have the one-to-one. -one. This is going to be our aspect ratio. Of course, the uh, YouTube shorts or TikTok size or portrait mode is going to be 916, and the 16 by 9 is going to be our landscape. Here we have a guidance scale, 
This of course is going to be how strongly our prompt is weighted, which almost seems a little bit redundant because it sounds like prompt magic is doing the same thing. We also have tiling. This is going to be for repeating textures or backgrounds, and of course ideal for repeating textures. This is going to be if you want a completely repetitive image. We can see this in Remix in the tile parameters. If we're wanting to create something like this here that can be a repetitive texture, that's what that is used for. Same with Control Net. This allows us to influence it a bit more, but only works on V1.5, and right now we're using V2. We also down here have the option of image to image. This of course pulling from Stable Diffusion's image to image where we can upload or drag and drop an input and then alter or edit it with our text prompt. Moving over here we of course have the base generative window where we can type in a text prompt here and then generate. But under this we have some fine tuned models that we can choose from. Knowing if we want to use control net we must use Stable Diffusion 1.5. For this let's go ahead and just use Leonardo Creative. That sounds interesting. You'll notice that our resolution, or dimension, as they say over here, actually changes based on the model we choose. If we go to select, that's the same. If we go to 2.1, it's going to change, but we can change it however we want. Okay, let's go back to Leonardo Creative, and then we have these styles. Right now, the only style we have is Leonardo, but we can upload more in the future. Let's go ahead and say a beautiful overhead mountain landscape, uh, feudal era Japan housing, stew Edo era, and go ahead and click on generate. You'll notice something though, this will only use one token. And that's because depending on the model we use, it will also impact the tokens that it costs. Same with resolution. The smaller the resolution, the less tokens it takes. The larger resolution, the more. Let's go ahead and click on generate and see what it comes up with. And a few moments later, we have our output. Now, of course, depending on what we choose, we can get a more specific output or not. But going into just the text to image generation is not something that anyone should be super unfamiliar with. It looks like our training model has just finished. We can see this in job status and it says done. Let's go ahead and access our landscape model. We're going to do this by going to fine tuned models on the left side and then your models on the top. Once in this screen, we can simply click to view our model and then click to generate with this model. Let's go ahead and give it the same landscape prompt and see if our model can generate something better than this. Wonderful. This is exactly what we wanted. This is truly an overhead mountain landscape view. Now, it didn't grab Edo era Japan housing, but in contrast, compared to the original or default models that we have to choose from, we get much closer to what we want by training our own model. And that's exactly why we do it. Anytime we're wanting to generate something specific to our needs, we can actually train our own model to accomplish that. Let's go ahead and go down to AI Canvas, or what I would just call Infinite Image. That's what it seems like to me. You'll notice this is still in beta, which means it's a work in progress. You'll be brought to a screen like this, and we have a prompt window on the bottom. On the right side, we have many of the same options that we had in our AI image generator. Actually, we have the same options, so we're not going to cover this right side menu. What we will do is actually say a beautiful overhead view of mountain landscape. We're going to go ahead and let this generate. You'll notice that inside of here, it uses many more tokens. To generate this one prompt takes four tokens versus one in the AI image generator. Let's go ahead and give this a second to generate. You'll notice that we have this menu on the left side as well. We have select, draw mask, erase, and upload image. We can upload our own image here. You'll notice that we also have four generatives. That's because it's using four tokens by default, which we can change with number of images on the top right. We're gonna go until we find something that we really like. I really like this one, and we're gonna click on accept. Once we click on accept, we can then begin to expand our image. You always wanna make sure that at least half of your image is inside of this window. 
So we're going to go ahead and go right here to about half of the image. And what this is going to do, and we're just dragging and dropping, what this is going to do is generate an extension of our image, which is going to become very, very handy when trying to make large 3D landscapes with depth maps. Let's go ahead and click on generate again, and it will attempt to fill this half mirroring, or not mirroring, but matching rather, the generative on the left side of the open box. And here we have it, we are done, a beautifully enhanced image. We actually have four different options we can choose from as well. For me, I think I like this open canyon view, so I'm going to go ahead and click accept, and then we're going to drag this over to the left side, and we're going to do the same thing by clicking generate with the same prompt. Once more, we have four options to choose from, and I think this first one is my favorite. Let's go ahead and click on Accept, and we can see we now have a broader or wider landscape view from that initial prompt. Honestly, this, other than or outside of the fine-tuned and self-trained models, this is my favorite feature because I want to make expansive worlds, basically uploading the image we get here to Stable Diffusion, grabbing a depth map, taking that into Blender, making it three-dimensional, plugging that into Unity, and then actually be able to generate a character and run around inside of our generated world. That's my end goal. Let me know what yours is down in the comments below and what your favorite option here is. Let's go ahead and continue though, exiting this editor, clicking OK, and going down to the next one, which is texture generation. This is specifically for adding texture to 3D models. This is going to use either a .ply or a .obj file. You're gonna to go to the top right and click upload new object and simply drag or drop here. Now, I know I said .ply, but it looks like it only accepts .obj. If you're wanting to mess around with this, there's turbosquid.com, which has some free 3D models you can play around with. And there we have Leonardo AI. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this app, let me know down in the comments below. As always, I will try and stay on top of it and be very active answering your questions and inquiries in the comments. If you want to know even more of how you can push the limits and boundaries with your AI generations, including making those depth maps and turning it into 3D worlds, check out one of the tutorials on your screen now. The one on the left will be just that, taking an image, giving it depth, and making a 3D model. The one on the right will help you better understand text-to-video generation with Runway ML.